All right, we've got the IPS upper off the midsection here, and I'm going to take the IPS uh, SUS unit off. So to understand that, um, basically what you have is you have your connection for your resolver here. It's got a connection that just threads on, so unthread that. Pull that connector down, so that's out of the way. There's one bolt on this side I've already removed. I'm going to take the other bolt out of the other side. It's a 12 millimeter wrench, and how it comes, okay? So, easy enough to take the SUS unit out. I want to show you a little trick I made up. Um, just pulled the gear off of a um, IPS SUS unit. And you drive the pin out, and I didn't want to lose the pin. And then I just uh, found a piece of steel off of an old tool that was a little loose and you know you use what you can in the marine field to make it work so I wrapped some latex gloves around it and worked it in there and it's tight enough where I can put it inside where the SUS gear goes and I can use an electric drill to spin it because what I need to do on the other side okay so I've got to spin it to get to the other bolt hole over here so, and that was where the other bolt hole is, okay? So let me pull it back to take the other bolt out. There we go. And I'll pull those two bolts out and take that resolver out next. So I'll pull that uh, bolt out and then spin it around and take the other bolt out so I can pull the resolver out. And the resolver is gonna come down through this tube with the harness. So up here is the harness for it, and that has to snake down that tube. Now that I have the two bolts out, I can reach in here and slide it out. Now hold it together when you take it out because you don't want to let it come apart. And make sure you get that harness plug to come down through. So I usually take it out with the tube so I can slide it back in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two tie wraps and put it through the bolt holes right now and tie it together. All right, and that way it can't fall apart and then just um, put it off to the side. So the next procedure for this disassembly of the IPS uh, transmission would be remove the two solenoids, take the two caps off, and these will come right off. So at that point, you gotta take that bracket off to get this bracket out of the way. We'll take the solenoids off, and then there is a special tool to uh, remove the piston assembly, the valve assembly, should I say, behind that. Okay, another feature here that I wanted to go over was that cylinder. Before you take it out, I wanna make sure you index it. Once you get it moving, you can use the tool um, and sometimes what you can do is twist it to break it loose and then just basically take it and pull it out. It's just got a couple of O-rings on it, so pull it come out. And you can see there's quite a few O-rings on there and there's no indexing to it. There's no stop or anything. So when you put it back in, it absolutely has to line up the oil passageways here have to line up in there. The bolt holes will center it, but the one thing I could say is I could do that and put the bolt holes back in. Now I have an oil passageway here that's on the wrong end. So I just like to use the index concept so it makes it easier so I can remember this is approximately where it goes. The bolt holes will line up and I can't invert it and make that mistake. So here's one of the valves. And what it'll do is it can move it in and out. So the solenoid itself, when current runs through it, it creates a magnetic field and it's going to pull this piston up into another position. It's strong enough to spring in there. I can't move it. And what it will do is it will direct the hydraulic pressure to the right direction. So obviously in the neutral position, any oil that comes into it will go out to back into the sump, and then we move this, we will relocate that hydraulic fluid to one of the passageways in the side that goes to the upper clutch pack, 
or to the lower clutch pack. All right next, we're gonna take the hydraulic pump off and it would be nice if the whole assembly would come off, but a lot of times the pump's gonna to wanna to come off the shaft first. Again, I put index marks here and over the side, I've actually indexed to the housing as well with the Sharpie. So I really wanna remember the rotation the position, should I say, of where this goes. Now I'm going to slide that off. So what I want to try to do is just slide it straight off. Get my fingers behind it and then take that off. So there's the hydraulic pump and inside here is where the uh, eccentric is and you can see where the oil passageways are. Okay, so we'll go over the oil passageways and how the pump works later. Typically what I do is if I think there's a problem on the pump, I just order this housing and get another pump for it. Especially if I'm putting clutches in it, because if I take this apart, I look in there and I see any type of metal, any type of severe wear, it's getting a new pump. Alright, once you've removed the pump again, there is in the pump housing. In the pump housing, there are these slots, and these slots are several of them. And they receive the key, which is basically a check ball. And when you take this off, make sure you do not lose the check ball. 